we're putting on a conference uh, for professionals and other people interested in health and social care to look at the sorts of issues that are presented or what might become barriers for people who are trying to access cancer services from very particular groups that we call hidden groups. Beth Johnson are working in partnership with Macmillan to look at the barriers for hidden groups when it comes to engaging with healthcare services. The group that we're working with, LGBT and cancer, is lesbian, bisexual, gay and transgender people. And we found that they're affected differently in different ways, there are different barriers, gaps in services, and we wanted to just come along and open people's eyes and get them to realise the differences. Homeless groups struggle to access services that we take for granted, for screening services, and, and actually just accessing a GP is so difficult for them. I often think the biggest issue is the things that people don't know what they don't know and so it's really important that people are made aware of the barriers and challenges people can experience in accessing services. I don't think any particular group in society is hard to reach, it's just that we haven't designed services that actually reaches out to them and that actually reflects their needs. There are all sorts of groups of people in our communities who just find it a bit more difficult. That might be people who find it difficult to communicate or we find it difficult to communicate with. Uh, either through their disability or perhaps through a language barrier or people who have difficulty accessing services because they may be homeless. Pit talk is a good because if I struggle with words I can use it on my iPad. I came with my own story it shares on Pit talk shows people how to help me, to support me. All of these hidden groups, um, where they're marginalised communities, they tend to present later with more advanced symptoms of cancer. Outcomes are worse, things are more difficult, they have worse experiences. And so addressing these issues makes a real difference. It in increases survival rates, survival statistics, so it literally saves lives. I might have at the beginning talked about patient-centred care I think it's person-centred care, and I think it's a challenge for us all. So what are we, as a group, going to do then about it? With the people who cancer may be affecting, how do we really understand their needs and behaviours and what they want? Speakers that we've had already this morning, they've been... This made me challenge my behaviours, um, not only personally but as a bit uh, organisation wise. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the final ones as well. Again, the thought provoking and the way we can change and help uh, support and break through to those hidden communities. So, when we talk about person centred care, that person needs to be understanding their full diversity, whether they're BME, whether they're LGBT, whether they have a learning disability, and whether they have multiple different identities, and making sure we know what their needs are. and that services are designed so that they get the best health care um, that, that, that everybody else gets within society. We need medical professionals to sort of treat people as people first. We need to look at different communities and find out what the problems are and how, how do we address them because I think there is, certainly from a healthcare professional, I think all healthcare professionals need a certain degree of education. It's been an absolutely fabulous event and I do think we need to, to have more of these. I think it's important for all the people who give the treatment, who are here hopefully, to listen to what they're saying. That this is a whole opportunity to listen and just find out more. Across all of the presentations, if people have actually highlighted two or three issues that they didn't know about, they'd not really thought about before, that they'll go away, research, speak to the organisations that were here. They're actually aware of the barriers that people experience in cancer, so that collectively we can make our cancer services more inclusive and better meet the needs of everybody within society. What I want is for professionals to go away from here and in their hospital or in their a consulting room or wherever to have that memory of today and to remember that there are tools and there are ways that they can support that person in front of them who may have those extra barriers.